Hello and welcome to a demo on VCN or Virtual Cloud Networking. So uh, let's take a look how you can create your own VCN, right? So all you need to do is you need to go to the hamburger icon and then click networking. Here, when you click networking, you will see Virtual Cloud Network or VCN. And, and you can also see other network artifacts which we discussed as part of our uh, different lectures like load balancer, customer connectivity, site to site VPN, fast connect. Everything is actually available under all this, right? But we are interested in Virtual Cloud Network. Now, when you click Virtual Cloud Network, you can always uh, pick a compartment under which you want to actually um, run this or your VCN has to be part of a compartment. Compartment is nothing but a lo logical isolation. You can easily create a compartment. If you go to compartment, just say create compartment and you can create a, a new compartment, right? So um, what we will do is, so there are different ways to create a VCN. Either you can create a VCN uh, using this, um, like a create a VCN option, or you could uh, use a create a start VCN wizard. So for this uh, understanding or this lab, let's take a look into the VCN wizard, what it is. Now, VCN wizard actually gives you two options. One is you create a VCN with internet connectivity, right? I'll explain you this already. We have actually um, taken a look in um, previous, um, say, um, demos or, or actually I would say lectures. And the second one is add internet connectivity and site to site VPN to a VCN. So what's the difference? Let's uh, take a quick look at, at it. So the first one says you are creating a VCN. So if you say I am creating a VCN, right? I'm creating this whole network address space, you can call it. Within that, what this um, wizard will do, it will create two subnets for you. One is a public subnet, another is the private subnet, simple. Now we, uh, now we all understand by now that if it's a public subnet, we are talking about internet facing applications, right? It could be a web server, some load balancer, which is internet facing, right? And if it is internet facing, you need to have a internet gateway. So you, you put an internet gateway on, on your VCN and which connects to internet. Now the second one is your private subnet. Now what could be the use case of a private subnet as we uh, spoke about? So the private subnet is uh, where probably you could keep your database servers. Now uh, uh, a perfect use case is if you want to download the patches. Now there is always an outbound connect. So uh, from internet you can't reach the private subnets but from private subnet you can reach the internet via the NAT gateway and this is what you can see as a NAT gateway. Then we also have a service gateway. If you want to uh, connect to various OCI specific services, then you can uh, connect to uh, connect, let's say to the object storage so you want to uh, connect, you, you can actually go via the service gateway. So pretty simple, right? It says you create a VCN with public subnet that can be reached from internet, also creates a private subnet that can connect to internet through NAT gateway and also privately connect to Oracle services network. And the second uh, ty type of wizard is all the same, everything is same. All you are doing is you are actually creating a site to site VPN as well. So what, what happens is, let's say this is your on-prem network, right? Your, your data center, you need to establish a connectivity between your data center and OCI. So this is where in between you see the site to site VPN. So there's a concept of CPE or customer premise equipment. It's like, uh, you can say the device which is having a public IP address. So you need to connect using that to uh, your OCI. And there's a concept of dynamic routing gateway or a DRG which sits on your VCN. This is more uh, complex, but for, for our understanding, I'd say let's uh, try and uh, create a VCN with internet connectivity. So it's pretty simple. All you need to do is you need to give a VCN name. So let's say we can say cloud uh, alchemy or we can say um, VCN lab 01, right? That's that's my uh, name of the VCN. As, as I told you, you need to choose a compartment. Now, uh, you need to configure a VCN, um, say CIDR block. So CIDR block must be between slash 16 to slash 30, right? So what happens if you do a slash 16 to slash 30, if you go from 16 uh, to slash 17, slash 18, slash, it's just the number of IP addresses or the block of IP addresses that you will get, right? So that's the only difference. And, and you can always plan your network accordingly. And then, uh, as I said, that this VCN is actually giving you a public subnet and it is giving you a private subnet, right? So the, the, that's what we are doing. You, you see, um, this is what uh, you are getting by default. 
and this is what you are getting by default for the private subnet you can always change these ip addresses if you want but for our learning initial learning you can see that it was 10.0.0 slash 16 as i told you it's slash 16 so first two octets are reserved for network rest are for host bits and when you do slash 24 first three octets are reserved for network so 10.0.0 so it means dot one dot two dot three and then the second subnet you create is 10.0.1 um, uh, onwards right so this is how you create and you say next uh, and uh, that's that's what uh, you will get actually right it's so simple that you will not only get vcn you will get the public private subnet but you also get the these three gateways that were there in the diagram you get the internet gateway you get the nat gateway you get the service gateway on top of it uh, whatever we understood in terms of security list so by default you will actually get uh, say default security list and these are the uh, say the default rules the ingress traffic egress ingress is the traffic coming in egress is traffic going out of the vcn right so uh, it, by default these are allowed like you you can have tcp uh, for port 22 and ssh is allowed and source 00 means from anywhere you are allowing it because uh, this is like kind of um, uh, from internet uh, we said that uh, this is allowed and this is the default security list for vcl lab 01 and this is the default security for private subnet so private subnet would be different uh, as as you can see uh, we are not allowing port 22 access from anywhere right so we are just allowing icmp traffic from outside so that's that's your ingress and egress rules you can look into then you have the concept of routing tables we already understood that so what's the default route so this is the default route for uh, your um, say public subnet and uh, this is for the private subnet right for public subnet as you know because uh, we need to route the traffic to internet so that's why the uh, your uh, internet gateway comes in the target type and for uh, in this the NAT gateway will come because as we said that if you need to go from your existing server to uh, or download the patches uh, you can easily do that so uh, so and then just we just simply create uh, create it and it's so quick guys within a matter of few seconds you will see that your vcn gets created right your subnets are created your internet gateway is created everything is up and running right and then if you click on view vcn you can see everything what we actually uh, did um, some time back or the learning we did that you have a public subnet you have a private subnet that's their ip address range then you have the routing tables that i talked about so routing sub uh, table for public subnet for the private subnet then you have the internet gateway you have the drg right now we haven't attached any drg because if drg will come into picture if you want to now connect your vcn to your on-prem network right or you want to connect a vcn to another vcn right so this is where it comes and then there's a concept of security list you can always go through it so if, if i click on the default security list this is the default security list um, for for the public subnet and same way for the private subnet you have one and yeah that's that's pretty pretty simple i would say so this these these uh, this is your vcn now any uh, say network related component that you want to use create you you actually use as part of this vcn and from uh, vcn you get the subnets and any instance that, that you are creating in say private subnet it will get the ip address based on the range that you have specified so let's say if you are creating instances within private subnet it will be in under this range 10.0.1 dot something right so this is how um, it, it actually goes so i believe you got a good understanding of vcn how you create a vcn thanks for watching